Um, thanks so much, everyone joining us today. Um, if you're if you're watching this, our Mills and Boone Friday night drinks, um, and I hope everyone's staying safe and that everyone is well um, on the call as well. I'm Nick, um, so I'm an editor on the team, and I'm joined today by three amazing Mills and Boone modern authors: Lucy King, Michelle Smart, and Louise Fuller. Hi. So, hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's. I'd, it would be great if anyone, everyone, could introduce themselves a bit for any um, anyone watching that doesn't know you already. Although, of course, they should. <laughs> um, so, Lucy, um, they will come to you first. How are you doing? What Christmas drink have you got going? And tell us about yourself. Well, hello. I'm Lucy King. I've got Baileys tonight, as um, I think there's a bit of a theme going on. <laughs> um, and I'm very well, I'm in Wiltshire at the moment and uh, in my sort of new garden office, which is very exciting. And uh, yeah, I've been writing for Modern for about two years now. So quite a newbie to the line. Brilliant, welcome. Mm -hmm. um, Louise, what about you? Um, I'm in Kent uh, and uh, I'm also drinking Baileys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Um, i am been writing for about five or six years. I've actually lost count, which probably means I've been writing longer than Lucy, but not as long as Michelle. Um, and, uh, yeah, really enjoy it. Really good fun. Great editor. Um, <laughs> uh, Thanks, Louise. <laughs> oh, Christmas. Excellent. Um, hi, Michelle. How are you? What about you? Same Hello, you. yeah, I'm Michelle Smart. I'm also drinking Baileys. <laughs> Got the refill ready. Uh, <laughs> I put this on Twitter that I would be drinking for everybody who can't be joining us in person. So, you know, <laughs> don't hold up to my promises. Um, I'm in Northamptonshire and I've been writing for Mills and Boone. First book was published in 2013. So, what was that, eight years? Yeah, eight years. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Well, and... I know that Michelle and Louise, while we're on the subject of Christmas, because it's Christmas Eve, <laughs> I know that you two have recently had a, kind of got some Christmas books out at the moment or recently come out because you wrote a kind of duet together. So do you want to tell us a little bit, a little bit about those Christmassy stories whilst we're in the Christmas mood? Have you got your book, Louise? I haven't. Do you think I should get one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can just tell <laughs> us about <laughs> what. <laughs> All right, Michelle, do you want to take take the floor while Louise gets one? All right, then. Well, my book's the first in the duet anyway, so it's all right. We can let her go off and go and find a book. Um, yeah, when we started working on it, the one thing we knew was that we wanted it to be snowy. We wanted snow, so we settled on Switzerland to be the base for both of our books. Their best friends, our heroines are, and um, my heroine is Mary, short for Meredith. Um, absolutely loves everything about Christmas. He loves it, loves it, loves it. And the hero is Giovanni, who hates everything about Christmas. The ultimate Christmas Grinch, except they're sort of stranded on a train, a lovely luxury train. I think the Orient Express with bells on and really blinged up even more than it would be. And that's it, really. Tom, <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Louise, <laughs> do you want to tell us a bit about your story? Michelle's just filled us in about Mary's story. Okay, so um, Santa, my heroine, is friends with Mary, and she goes out to stay with Mary in Switzerland, and she's an ice skater, and she's really out there to have a holiday, which she doesn't really have, but then she uh, can't help but skate. And while she's out there, she bumps into a a very nice young man who's not very nice at that point but will ultimately become very nice uh, <laughs> and uh yeah they uh melt the ice together yeah. amazing oh <laughs> so christmassy it really puts me in the mood amazing. yeah my cover's actually really good because it's got literally all kinds of christmassy things on it i was very impressed by the tree and the wreath they did a really good job what yeah, have you yeah. i was really impressed as well oh, i love a christmas tree <laughs> <laughs> I need one for my office. <laughs> I haven't got much in my office apart from lots and lots of books around there. It's literally, this is like the one bit of area where there is no books. The rest of it is just books everywhere. It's <laughs> my little, where I can sort of wedge myself in. 
Amazing. That's what we want at all times to be completely surrounded by books. Yeah. Well, at least that's what I want. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And Lucy, like, what's what have you been working on? I know you've got a book out at the moment. I do. Billionaire without rules. So, do you want to tell right. us a bit about a bit, bit about that? Yeah, so I've got what I've got on here as well. Hang on. Oh, there we go. It's not so Christmassy, but it's the third of a trilogy. Um, nice clever. Like, yeah, I know, I know. Who wouldn't want to be on a boat right now? Um, it's, um, the third of a trilogy, The Lost Sons of Argentina. And it's about, uh, well, the trilogy is about three identical triplets who get separated at birth and adopted by various people across, you know, different countries. And this ties it all up. And my hero is a... Um, a uh, cyber security expert, but used to be a hacker, and my heroine is a private investigator who used to be a police officer. So, fun times. <laughs> Amazing. Sounds yeah. really, really great. Um, brilliant. Um, oh, we have a comment. Um, oh, from Niels and Dean. Um, so, <laughs> what <laughs> what can readers expect from your stories or the or the kind of the modern series in general? Um, this is a good one. Um, Michelle, do you want to take this first? Okay. Um, do we have to keep it clean? <laughs> <laughs> I think you can imply. <laughs> no, okay. okay. Lots of glamour, emotional roller coasters, and getting down and dirty. How's that? That's not too explicit, is it? Excellent. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think that sums it up brilliantly. <laughs> Lucy, what about you? What What about your stories? Yeah, I think it's that the fantasy, the escapism, hopefully the emotional intensity. I hope there's a bit of humour and kind of a bit of banter between my characters. Um, and uh, yeah, just sort of great heroines and heroes who can match them in every way, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> And Louise, um, what about you? What's your favourite thing about the modern series and what, what do you like bringing out in your books? Well, I think it's really nice to go to different locations. I think, you know, especially at this time, you know, when we're all stuck at home and particularly, you know, longing to see, you know, beaches and sunshine and, you know, just escape from what we're doing. I think it's nice mm -hmm. to... Uh, offer readers that, you know, chance to go somewhere that they can't at the moment. Um, and it's also nice, I think, for them to read about people like themselves who have these amazing adventures because they they meet this person who takes them on an adventure, both geographically and emotionally. Yeah, yeah. And it gives you a chance at your, for your editor to <laughs> escape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's what I'm we um, in our heads while we're writing them just <laughs> <laughs> forget what's going on in the world just yeah you know, where we want to go I've definitely found during lockdown um and and even just now with covid it's a really lovely opportunity to kind of escape from the realities you know you can you can really switch off and it's actually quite a shock sometimes when you come out of your office and have to kind of into the real world and you know it, it's just it's just so different isn't it from what you're writing um and researching i mean the research is mm -hmm. it's such hard work isn't it ladies and do you guys like to when you can do you like to travel to research um, yes. Or... <laughs> oh, I'd love to. I'm writing a, the book I'm writing at the moment is set on a on an island in the Indian Ocean. I'd love to have a chance oh, to go. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's all go. Yeah. Yeah. Research yes. trip. Yes. <laughs> yes. Further away, the better. No, I definitely think you would. Um, I mean, you, you you can't really go wrong, can you? When you learn about other other places, you know how they live, what they eat, what how they how they live their lives, you know, the food. I mean, it's it's just so exciting always. I, I mean, you can never get bored with that. I don't know why. It's, it's just, it's, it doesn't matter which country you choose. You might you might think, oh, I suppose, you know, um, I'll try a Greek because I haven't done a, a Greek hero or whatever. And then you think, oh, well, last time I went to Greek, I drank a load of hideous <laughs> alcohol and threw up. And your memories may not be great, but once you start... <laughs> It's always so much amazing stuff, and you actually end up having to like 
edit it out, you know, <laughs> just to sort of get rid of all the good stuff because there's so much good stuff. It's so amazing, the world, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that's what's amazing about the internet as well is just being able to kind of, you can look up anything. Yeah, everything, absolutely anything. Without well, having to step foot outside your office. And there's oh. always some handy person who's blogged, you know, who's gone on these yeah. and actually done it for real. So even if you haven't, you can see what they've seen. And that's oh, just amazing. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, I still follow. The, I did this one book. Actually, that's the one that's I think coming out next. And she's li been living on her own boat for I think eighteen months. I can't remember how long she's been on it for. Um, but literally sailing the world on her own boat. And the idea came. It was watching Ben Fogel, um, you know, lives in the wild, and is a man who is and he calls himself a sea gypsy. And that you know that's what the community refers to themselves as. And they just wander the oceans on their boats and I ended up getting his book that you know that he's published himself you know reading all about it and I was even dreaming about you know about for myself like oh oh I think I can yeah. do this I mean yeah. I, there's absolutely no way I could do it no way in the world. <laughs> yeah. you know, I and I still follow his blogs you know and he puts videos up every now and then and I still you know I still love it and but yeah it was from that one program that's where the whole idea yeah. that book came from mm. um, yeah, and he just sees the world. He's like, oh, he got stuck in Fiji during COVID. I mean, poor thing. Oh, <laughs> so sad. Oh, oh, dear. So sorry, poor thing. <laughs> oh, I've just seen that Heidi Rice has said Merry Christmas to everyone. So Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Heidi. Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we have a question. Um, which were, what were your journeys to becoming published authors like? And any advice for aspiring writers um louise do you want to kick us off um well uh i did a competition uh can't even remember what magazine it was but it was um one of the prizes was to to uh speak with a mills and boone editor which i did and it just started from that really and i wrote three chapters or maybe two of a russian book which had probably more characters in it than war and peace and uh <laughs> nick who was the editor um not nick Splo, sorry um you know basically kind of rolled her eyes pityingly and told me that uh, i needed to edit out about 99 percent of it which um i thought it sounded like too hard work so i just binned the whole thing and then uh yeah i wrote a second one um which was about a kind of a Hungarian Romany and uh, yeah that that was the one that got published but I, if I had advice I would say what everyone says which is read read your subject you know just read and read and read romances particularly if you're writing for genre romance read genre romance and and don't be frightened if it doesn't all come together each time each book's different your writing process is different you know, just try and uh, take constructive criticism. If you're lucky enough to have someone who is good at giving criticism, accept it. Don't take it personally. Just see it as a learning curve, really, um, because everybody needs to be edited, <laughs> basically. Um, you know, and it, it, it's a it's a privilege, really, to be edited because um, it makes your writing better and hopefully makes more people like your writing. So it's all to the good. Um, Great advice. Thanks, Louise. Um, Lucy, what was your journey like? So I I started writing for Modern in about two years ago, but before that I was writing for Modern Heat, um, Kiss, Harlequin Kiss. And I won a competition back in, I think it was about 2008. And the prize was... Um, uh, what well, I think, yes, I, I, an editor for a year, that was right. And I um, worked with the fabulous Kimberly Young. Um, and then, um, so I wrote quite a few books for Kiss and then that, end, that um, ended in about 2015 and um, was living in Spain at the time. So then came back and spent a few years kind of resettling back here and then um, started writing, well, working towards, um, yeah, writing for modern. So yeah, it's been quite a kind of, yeah, quite a journey, <laughs> as they say. But, um, yeah. And any advice? Um, well, I joined the new writer scheme of the RNA, which was brilliant. So I that was how I kind of, the feedback I got for my initial manuscripts was really helpful. So that was really good to do. Um, 
And uh, yeah, like Louise said, read, read, and read. Um, and also, I've, I've finished the book. So, you know, just try and finish something. Um, and then you can edit it. Um, <laughs> it's hard to edit a blank page, as they say. Um, and yeah, there are loads of resources out there and um, books and things that you can um, that you can look at and things. So that's what I would say. But the end, the, the new writer scheme of the Romantic Novelist Association was, I found, brilliant. Brilliant. Michelle, mm. what about you? What's your journey like? <clears throat> oh, long. Um, so I started <laughs> my first writing my first Mills and Boom when I was fifteen. Um, because I thought it was going to be really easy, and I think I did about a page, and it's like, oh, this is really hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when we went to Rome for our 10th wedding anniversary, so that was nearly 14 years ago, and I don't know, I just got that romance back in me, and I was like, right, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And so I went, as soon as I got home, and went and bought every Mills and Boone that I could get my hands on, so I hadn't read one for a few years by then and just fell back in love with it all again and the modern presents was the one that I just fell in love with and so the first book that I sent in was rejected that took me a year to write the first one did that got rejected like you know lovely form thank you but try again second one exactly the same thing third one um they liked the first three chapters but asked me to revise it and that then got rejected the fourth one went through three rounds of revisions and then got rejected. This one, it worked. Ta-da! Perseverance. <laughs> yeah. I was just determined. It's like, no, I'm, I'm going to do this. I am going to do this. So, yeah. So I guess that's how I sort of yeah, felt it out. I was, like, determined to get it. Because I, before the competition, I, I sent in a few and they got rejected and things. And I was like, right, no, I want to know. I want to do this now. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, just you carry on until... You don't you? It's like... Yes. Eventually you will give in and give me a contract. <laughs> <laughs> well, it means, I mean, doing that sets you in such good stead for just the career that you you need to have as a writer and like the resilience, because it's yeah, not an easy job resilient. at all, is it? It's, no. it's such no. a creative, like, I, I'm in awe of all of you, all of you guys that managed to, you know, keep going, keep writing through pandemics, through ducks running around <laughs> I know Louise has some ducks running around dogs running around you know and everything else so um yeah I just absolutely always in awe um Michelle do you have any advice for aspiring same writers? as what Lucy and Louise both said read just read 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 you know if you've got a line that you particularly want to write for um you know if you're talking specifically for Mills and Boone read all the books that you can get find the stuff that you, you know the parts in it that you love you know what is it that when you're reading that makes your heart beat faster mm. um you know if there's bits you know if there's things that you're reading in it that you're like oh you know what would you do differently you know just you've got to keep keep your brain churning but just read 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 and grow a thick skin you really yeah, need, really you definitely need, need a thick skin <laughs> yeah. yeah and like louise said as well be prepared to take criticism you know because mm. it's always with the best of intentions and it will only make your work stronger Unless it's from somebody who doesn't read at all, then ignore that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and throw them down it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think when people first start writing, um, because even saying the words "I'm a writer" sounds really alien. I found it really hard mm. to kind of, I'd sort of shuffle around it a bit and try and avoid it because it sounds like it's it's like a thing doesn't it and you think someone's going to say no you're not um so even just getting to the point of of admitting that to yourself and being able to say, say it out loud i think that requires a kind of a level of uh kind of commitment and perseverance mm. um and you you, ju you just have to understand that it's something that very few people do <laughs> you know so lots of people will have opinions on how easy it is and you know how everyone could write a book i'm sure both michelle and lucy have had people say to them oh yes i think i could do that and you could you really could but um you have to do it like lucy says you have to write the thing you have to get it on the page um finish it <laughs> and it takes time it takes a lot longer than you'd ever think and yeah. then, then it might be a pile of rubbish so you have to, you have, to have another go at it and another go and you know 
it's, it's, and then it's sitting down every day and do well not every day but whenever your whatever yeah. your schedule is and and not being distracted in my case by grazing aspirin uh -huh. but whatever's your poison yeah. <laughs> easy, easy to do <laughs> yeah. what yeah. easy to get distracted by grazing anatomy i've got to say yeah. 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 parts of the anatomy anyway <laughs> <laughs> No, yes, sorry, that's really isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we write modern presents, we can see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ooh. Ooh. What do you most love about writing or reading Christmas romances? Well, we've touched on a little bit of your own Christmas romances, but yeah, what is it that excites you guys about this? Lucy, do you want to go first? Well, uh, yeah, I, I've never actually written a Christmas romance, so um, I think I kind of I feel the need now. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but reading, I mean, you were talking earlier about your uh, Michelle, your heroine, uh, your hero, I think, who's a real Grinch about Christmas. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I love reading um, a grumpy character who hates Christmas and then kind of you know changes their mind. Um, I love the whole kind of the the, the whole. It's really like feel good kind of cozy isn't it it's like snow and lights and it's just lovely that's that's what I love about reading them yeah that warm yeah yeah, yeah yeah Michelle what's your favorite thing about them um well my favorite thing about writing them is like this one I wrote it in January yeah yeah <laughs> it was brilliant redo carols <laughs> I, have my playlist. I always have a playlist each book i write i do a new playlist and this was just christmas songs so the whole way through january yeah. i kept christmas going yeah. I, <laughs> I just kept christmas going for an extra month it was brilliant loved it <laughs> that's, that's a really good tip Living yeah. in christmas land it's wicked you know the store those mince pies <laughs> And more yeah, what, <laughs> what did your family think of that? Were they like, oh, the Christmas, the Christmas songs are on again? <laughs> They're used to humouring me, bless them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, what about you? What's your favourite? Yeah, thing? I mean, I think think reading them. Definitely, when you're writing it, it does it does um, put you back in the Christmas frame of mind. And Christmas is a good is a good time of year. You know, I mean, I know it can be stressful. And there's a lot to do. But it is all—it's all about the good, good feelings, isn't it? You know, it's—it's yeah. it's about reaching out to people. It's about being kind, and you know, there's a lot yeah. of love around, just just general yeah. love, let alone the kind of steamy stuff. Um, but in, in, obviously, if you're writing a present, you can get the best of both worlds. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's good, but um, yeah, love a bit of Christmas, and you got—you know, I mean, it's just a—it's a—it's very. Um, present in culture isn't it you know like Bridget Jones you know you start watching that and you just think yeah Christmas yeah. parties yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that Christmas party no <laughs> well, I'll do what you want about mate no you don't have those <laughs> no well I actually I have not had any Christmas parties no, this year no Christmas parties yeah um I have been to one that was at the beginning of the month with my antenatal friends who, from when I was first pregnant 20 years ago, well, he's 20 now, so 21 years ago. And um, we kept in touch, six of us, and we get together, oh, every month or two. We had our Christmas party. And, oh, it was hilarious. Aww. We went to the uh, golf club nice. of all places. DJ, we all dig it. <laughs> Bless them, two of them now got COVID, look. But not from the party. They're just <laughs> they're earlier and they're like, oh, snuff. Bless them not very well. But well, at least we had that kind of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Glad you got that in there and we can always celebrate virtually. Yeah. Over, yeah. Like we're here. We're here with our Baileys and what more yes. could we want? <laughs> and talking, talking of kind of Christmas traditions, um, does anyone have any particular like quirky ones or like ones that you have to do every year? Um Louise, what about you? I think I can hear some. I think I can hear some quacking. <laughs> I don't know where the quacking's come from, but he's not in here anymore. <laughs> no, it's not trying to get in, mate. <laughs> Back in. Um, well, uh, yes, as you know, I do like the film Elf, and that really puts me in the mood every year. I like to. I like to go through uh, all the Christmas films that are, that are available on you know netflix whatever because they just they just put you in the mood don't they um i like to sit down and watch them with the kids um 
what else do we do? I mean, we always have a walk on Christmas Day. We go to midnight mass on Christmas Eve, which is lovely. Um, I always like doing that. It kind of st starts the whole kind of festivities off, and you get to bellow out some, hymn, you know, some carols rather, uh, you know, which always makes you feel good. Uh, yeah, it's just really about family, really, and just seeing seeing as many people as you can. Although obviously not this year because we're still kind of not doing that, are we? But um, in a in an ideal world, you know. <laughs> would get in as many people as you could wouldn't you it's, uh, yeah. i'll tell you what's really nice and we don't always do it but we have done it a few years is where you have somebody who you don't know very well and that is a really oh, nice thing, yeah. thing to do because they just change the the vibe a bit you know and but it's interesting having someone in who doesn't know your family and traditions as well so i think that's quite a nice thing to do but obviously again not not at this particular time mm -hmm. Oh, lovely. Um, Michelle, do you have any favourite traditions? Yeah, mostly. Um, what Louise was saying about films, when I do my wrapping, I always watch films. So I always start with It's a Wonderful Life. That's yeah. always my go-to. I love that film. And then normally I would move on to Elf. But guess what? My <laughs> husband, yeah, he deleted Elf. It's a crime. He's deleted yeah, Elf. He's deleted Elf. Fourth Street, Die Hard and Home Alone. Yeah. Oh, he's right in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, you can watch it anytime. No, I can't. It was on there for a reason. It's a wonderful life we've got on DVD. That's fine. But the others have been kept for years and, oh, very miffed. <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to buy <laughs> them again. I'll have to pay you to make up for it. <laughs> oh, Heidi loves It's Wonderful Life and Elf. Good taste. It's wonderful, isn't it? it is. Oh, I love that film. It's just makes my, oh, it makes me cry every time. Amazing. Lucy, what about you? So, well, I've never seen Elf. I know. <gasps> Awful. So, that's something we're going to start this year. <laughs> um, but other than that, um, yeah, not really. I mean, we have Christmas lunch and crackers, and I make everybody wear their hat for all right. the rest of the day because everybody sort of takes their hat off, and I'm not, you know, I'm not with that. Um, so yeah, but other than that, just sort of yeah, trying to see as much family as possible, and um, yep, yeah, sprouts could not have Christmas without sprouts. Um, but yeah, other than that, just sort of yeah, maybe a walk on Christmas Day, Queen's speech. Have to watch the Queen's speech. Um, um, I always miss uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's an awkward time, isn't it? But anyway, yeah. So that's it, basically. Yeah, Christmas Day is for us. It's Christmas Day, really. Opening the presents in the morning and things like that. Mm -hmm. well, what oh, about you, Nick? You got any? Yeah. What do I do? A walk. There's a, always a walk on Christmas Day as well, um, because my nan's normally there and she has dogs, so I we will normally go and walk down and feed the dogs. So part of part of the tradition, but yeah, hats are a must. My dad's always really stressed. He's always created this timing sheet for the Christmas dinner that <laughs> never stops too rigorously, and he's always stressing because we're half an hour behind. So it's like the pa parsnips aren't in, the potatoes aren't in, and me and Mama just and, me, and my brother just merrily like we don't really mind. And dad's yeah, running around like a headless chicken. Um, Did you have a checklist? <laughs> there's a checklist there's tick boxes there's it's all printed off the computer wow. there's a at nine o'clock this needs to happen yeah it's very yeah but as i say we're always giggling because it's never stuck to at all <laughs> um that just makes perfect yeah, yeah exactly. um oh so we have a question from excuse me if i don't pronounce your name correctly but lma um so it's great to see the authors behind the great books that i read oh that's nice out of interest what were some of the reasons for your original stories being rejected does anyone remember no and what sort oh, of yes. spin? lucy you know so what so you i remember very much very clearly the first book i submitted i had had i got some time off work and like michelle i thought how hard can it be always wanted to write one <laughs> read them like read hundreds of them when I was a teenager then didn't read them for a while and then thought yeah let's give it a shot so I wrote it in a month and sent it in and it was oh it started in the wrong place it was it was too much backstory right I mean it was just like info dump for about four yeah. chapters 
the hero, hero and the heroine didn't meet until about chapter five. It was just rock. It was just not what was you know what what the editors were looking for. So that was why that one was rejected. I remember it very clearly. But then I thought, right, I'm going to read. Yes, find out exactly what what they do on that. So, yeah. Well, see, with my first one and my second one, I never actually knew what it was that they didn't like about it because both letters were identical <laughs> and they both came with a stack of tips on how to write a duck. Ah. <laughs> 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 I, God, I kid you not. <laughs> I mean, it was it, it was wonderful to receive it and I was just like, oh, right, okay, and I really did digest it. And, but I, I know with the third book, again, that was one I did actually get feedback on and revisions on for the first three chapters. And that I had started that in the wrong place. And by then, the more you do it, the better you get. And you get it. So obviously I'd made that improvement from the first two books. Um, but the third book, in the, in the end, I got, you know, after the revisions that I sent off for the third one, just the first three chapters. And I can't remember the exact wording, but it, it was a case of, thanks very much, try again. Yeah. Yeah. Louise, do you remember? Um, well, I think, as I said before, the, the first one had a huge cast. You know, it was like all three episodes of Lord of the Rings. Um, I had everybody in it. Um, everybody had relations. Everybody, everybody had a backstory. Um, I think the, the one of the main things that when you talk to other authors, I think understanding conflict... Mm. and not really understanding conflict when you first start writing or making it something enormous that then can't be superseded within the time scale of the book or making it so innocuous it doesn't have the legs for it. So I think getting conflict right could probably be a big obstacle for a lot of new writers. Um, mm. And again, like we've all said, the massive info dump and starting everything far too late, you know. Yeah. You can't, you can't start... the. The hero and heroine story halfway through the book i mean no. you know it's just not going to play so i think probably that you know after that there's obviously going to be other things for everybody who writes that you do wrong you know you've, i don't know the pacing could go off you could lose the tension quite often i think but yeah i think probably those two would be info dump and um you know uh perhaps uh too many secondary characters. Too many secondary yeah. characters, and not and not enough understanding of what the conflict is between mm. your hero and heroine. Really, um, I think in um, in one of the in a couple of uh, the first books that I submitted, I kind of I had like kind of cardboard character villains or villainesses, and <laughs> um, just sort of cliches. You know, the evil other woman, and you know, kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it, I did actually. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I think, as as Michelle says, when you first start writing, you, I mean, authors will often talk about voice, and it can sound really kind of, you know, la di da if you're not a, if you're not a writer. Mm. But actually, you do have to find your own voice. So the the consequence of reading a lot of other people, like we all did, is that then suddenly you don't actually have a voice. And those early drafts are often your attempt to work out who you are. Yeah. Um, and what bits, like Michelle said, you know, the bits that you did like, which maybe you perhaps like the strength of voice or maybe you, um, I don't know, like the writing style, but then perhaps you, you know, the plotting is too, I don't um, extreme or something. You know, you, so you pick, you cherry pick. And as you get yeah. more confident and more experienced, you develop a, an understanding of what you want and what you want to write and what you want your reader to get out yeah. of it. But I think that for me was like, um, you know, uh, the arc of the grail, you know, the holy grail, you know, when I was trying to start writing, I was just like, who am I? <laughs> what am I writing? <laughs> um, so I found this really good as well. Don't know if you've oh, seen yes. That. What, what's that, Lucy? Could you read us out the title? Yeah, it's Kate Walker's 12 Point Guide to Writing, writing Romance. And I've said it before, and I'll say it till the cows come in. I mean, it's really good for understanding things like yeah. conflict. And, um, yeah. you know, Kate Walker's a, um, a brilliant Mills and Boone writer. And um, it's got really great tips and sort of character questions and to ask. Synopsis. Characters. 
Assume yeah, things seen. like that, you know, key questions to ask your characters and stuff. Yeah. So you really get to understand them. Um, I can't read them because I've got my glasses on. And I'm <laughs> too far away. It's a dark in here. Um, but I found that brilliant. And I still look at it. I still kind of, you know, I've written, I don't know, how many books. And I still kind of use it to kind of prompt me if I've got a bit stuck somewhere. Yeah, no, I definitely use Kate. I thought, I thought it was a really, um, it's a really good book just for dipping into. You don't have to really yeah. come to cover, but it's just yeah. nice if you come up against an obstacle, isn't it? It's like yeah. having an established author there with you, if, particularly yeah. before you are acquired and you have an editor, because obviously your editor, like Nick, who, you know, is the patron saint of Mills and Boom writers and has a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to claim that, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, where you just think you can bounce things off with someone. It's such a relief to have someone who gets the genre, gets your voice. You know, that's really important, I think. And yeah. you don't get that when you're not um, published, unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> um, but once you do, you have to make and use and abuse Nick at all times so that you get your money. <laughs> <laughs> <That was amazing. laughs> Poor Nick. <laughs> no, she's genius. I know. <laughs> and she's all ours. You're making me blush. <laughs> Not as much as me. Well, even yeah. however many books we've all written between us, Nick obviously edits lots of authors, so she gets even more you know mm -hmm. and I think she gets to hear different voices she gets to see different ways authors write so she knows what's strong and what's not I just think it's really handy that's not much use to people who haven't been published but I think your goal is to kind of set up that on your shoulder somebody or, or some central thought process that keeps you straight mm -hmm. No, and we are a friendly we're a friendly bunch i would say as editors like on the yeah. Mills and team so yeah if people have questions like we are around on twitter and things like that and if you do submit yeah we yeah we try and get back with advice when we when we can so yeah no, well, like lucy no. said the um the um romantic novelist association the conferences which i don't know if they're still doing because of covid but i mean that's a really good entry yeah for a yeah. lot of people to, to go to and meet other authors, you know, published yeah. authors, meet editors, go to lectures, um, ask questions, get them answered by a person in front of you. You know, that, that really helps, I think. Um, and realising that there is a goal out there that you can reach, um, that it's not unattainable. No, just don't give up. Just and don't give up. Yeah, yeah. what you were saying is when you showed Kate Walker's book, that's why I went and grabbed that. Stephen King's yes. writing yeah. is yeah. amazing. And yeah. for whatever genre you want to write for, and, you know, look, and, you know, the first half details his own life and writing experience. And then the second half is nuts and bolts about writing um, and developing your voice. But the amount of rejections that he got, you know, he used to, yeah. he had a pin on his wall and he used to, you know, because obviously this was in the days where you'd get it in writing, and he used to just hang them on this pin, all of his rejections, until he couldn't fit any more on it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> wow. Thick skin. So yeah. I think, yeah, between this like and Kate Walker's yeah. book. It's sorted. <laughs> and, don't, and don't give up. Yeah, I think that's, that's really key. Oh, and Susan has loved all of your books. Oh, that's lovely. Um, yeah, and so I guess we're coming to the end of our of our little drink session today. But do you each have a favourite of your own books that we can kind of that we can end on? Um, would you say, Lucy? Do you have a favourite? Uh, yes. So I do. I have uh, one from my pre-modern days, the couple behind the headlines, which was a modern heat kiss, which I love writing, love everything about it, and from my modern series, I love. Um, I think Invitation from the Venetian Billionaire, which is book two in the trilogy. I love that. I don't know why I just do. <laughs> Set in Venice, that's probably why. <laughs> what, are, what are the themes, Lucy? In, uh, ooh, uh, well, interesting. Um, I don't know, really. Well, it's the book two. So he, yes, my hero is, grew up on the streets of Venice. And it's about finding his 
like finding his love for life again he kind of lost it for a bit and uh, my heroine has to trust <clears throat> has to give her emotion learn to give her emotions to you know to put it out there oh, to kind of, it sounds really yeah. emotional and lovely it is really emotional yeah and she was yeah. groomed as a teenager and it's all very kind of yeah got lots of things yeah. to overcome so yeah oh, lovely. louise do you have a favorite of yours um well i do quite like the christmas she married the playboy um for me um i've done two books now with michelle and they're Great. I mean, I think I drive around the bend. I'm so sexy and she's You're brilliant to work with. She's quite around the bend. You are just so fantastic to work with. So, well, I mean, anything that I write with her, I just really love the process and I, I love the energy she brings. It's a really nice experience because you spend a lot of time on your own as a writer and. Um, if she's just got so much energy and you know expertise, and she's a great writer. Um, so yeah, you know anything I've written with her, she's definitely, definitely up there. Um, you lovely. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, with you. Oh, George. Michelle, do you have a favourite of yours? I can't remember its name. Montana <laughs> <laughs> Sims book. That is. There's a Cinderella in the title. The Sicilians um, bought Cinderella. That's it. Whoa. That's a recall. I've got many titles that you wasn't written in the world. That was a He's got a mastermind. Especially <laughs> subject. I've, I've worked here for eight years, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. I think. Well, she's normally the one that I've just finished, but that yeah. one, I don't know. I think it's because I love Dashlin so much. What or the next one know? where you have no kind of. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry, Lucy, what were you saying? Well, the, my favourite book is also the next one that I haven't yet written, which is all kind of in my head. <laughs> which is going to be what better than like anything that. else. Yeah. <laughs> um, brilliant. Oh, well, it's been so lovely to chat with you guys. Thanks for the Baileys. Thanks for the chat. And um, I'm sure everyone's loved all of your fantastic advice and hearing about your books. Um, and yeah, everyone should dive in and start reading if they haven't already with the recommendations. So yeah, Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays. And thanks for listening. Oh, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Take care.